So now we come to the more difficult part of using the GIMP, and that is text on a path. We, when we put in text into uh, the GIMP, we choose the letter uh, text tool, the little giant letter A, and we click and drag a nice big box. This box is where our text is going to go, and it puts up this little handy window up above to talk about font sizes. The font right now is currently called Sans, and the size would be 18, and there's a number of other things, bold, italics, underline, such things. And oftentimes my students say, what do I do now? What do I do now? The truth is, once you've let go of this corner, just take your hand off the mouse and start typing. So you don't need to click anywhere else. And there's no visible cursor flashing at you. I really hope in the next version of the GIMP, they make it really obvious that there should be a, a cursor flashing right there. That would be really obvious. So we're just going to start typing. I, I still haven't clicked anywhere. I'm just going to type in vote for Amber. Now you'll see it comes in as a text color. I really don't care. We're actually not going to use this text at all. Um, certainly not in the traditional sense. So if you want to change that color to red or pink or purple, it, it's completely irrelevant. The most important thing that you do is after you've done typing, after you've completed typing in vote for Amber, drag your mouse over top of it. And instead of highlighting in blue, it highlights in a kind of a gold color, which is random and I don't understand. And we're going to change the font size to size 30. So 20, 20, da, 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 da. And I could have also just highlighted this and just typed in the number 30. Oops, that's 50. I wanted 30. And you'll see there, there's vote for Amber. It's now 30. And now I'm just going to click on the bottom corner and bring this up. The reason for that is that if I have extra space underneath the text, it will try to add that as spacing to the text. And I don't want that. I just want this to be pretty much exactly the size of the gold highlight or yellow highlight. And so now my vote for Amber box is ready. I can stretch it in different directions if I choose to, but I really don't want to. So here's my text layer, vote for Amber. It's ready to go. If I ever need to edit it again, make sure you have the A tool and you can click on it and edit it again. But later on, we're not going to be able to edit it anymore. So that's the first part. The next part is notice that this tool right here is called the paths tool. Looks like a yellow calligraphy pen that tried to draw a line with three points and then drew a curve on top of it. So on the paths tool, we don't really need anything special, but what I'm going to do just to make it easier because this Canada flag, uh, the maple leaf is just so easy to reference is that I want you to click on the tip of the red on this side. If her hair is covering it, just kind of guess and click one time. This is not a click and drag. This is just a click on the point, red point on the other side. When you do that, you should get this sort of line that goes straight across Amber's forehead from maple leaf tip to maple leaf tip, and it should be nice and horizontal. And then in the middle, we're going to do our click and drag and take it up to the point of the Canada flag in the middle. Now, what you'll see here is that there are two antennae, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to call them handles. And there's a square at the top that's a handle on this side and a square at the top that's a handle on this side. And you can see as I drag them around, they affect the curvature of the line. They make the curve uh, e either sharp or not. And what we want to do is we want to make this so that the curve of this line follows the edge of the circle roughly to the same extent. So you can see here, if it's this distance here, it should be the same distance here and the same distance here and the same distance here. Not quite perfect yet. So we'll bring that down. Oh, that's getting a little better. You can see that this is a little bit fiddly, but if I work hard at this right now, then my vote for Amber text will go around this and will actually look like it's following the curve of the outside edge. So once I've got this path made, in order to prove that there is indeed a path made, I can go up here to the paths tab that we've never used before. And you'll see that there is an unnamed path. Now remember, this should have an eyeball on it. So if you forget at any point in the path seems to disappear, just come back to the Paths tab, find your path, click the eyeball, and it will stay visible. As it is now, if you don't, 
then random things will happen. Now, before you go any further, because it gets really confusing, let's create a new layer. Again, here's create new layer, or you can go to layers, new layer. And we need to call this one, um, I'm going to call this text top. Some people call it curved text one or something like that. I'm going to call this text top just so I remember which one's which and hit OK. So I have a blank layer called text top. And now if I go to my paths tool, you can see that I've got my path, but I need to select it so that I can put my text onto the path. And in order to select it, thankfully, when I've got it highlighted, they have this handy red button here called path to selection. So it's going to take the path and select it. And now you can see I have the moving jiggly line that goes around it. And there's even one going across because it's trying to combine that. So now on the vote for amber layer, if I can either right click on the vote for amber layer and get a menu here, or I can simply click over here on layers, same menu. And the third giant A coming down is called text along path. Now, sometimes when you get this, unfortunately, the GIMP defaults to the text to path. We don't want that. So we're going to click text along path. And you see these bubbles? That's wrong. For some strange reason, the GIMP has got the text to path selected. So I'm going to edit undo. And this time I'm going to leave it exactly the same and try the same choice again and say text along path. And now I get a very visible vote for Amber. I don't know why it's glitchy like that. Maybe yours went straight to the vote for Amber and well, whatever. So it's working. Yay. And now we have vote for Amber. But this surprisingly is just a new path. It's not real text. So we want to make it real text onto the layer called text top. So let's select the layer called text top just to make sure we're in the right layer. We select the path, which clearly has our words on it and is not just the straight line. And again, we're going to use the same red box that we did last time, path to selection. And when we do this, then the dotted line will stop being on the curve and will start being around the letters. So here we go, red box, clicked, and there it is. So now vote for amber text is all highlighted, but there's still nothing there yet. It's still just empty space and the line is no longer highlighted. So let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna choose this way to zoom now and we'll get in nice and close. Now I want to bucket fill inside of these letters. So here's the bucket. Here's a color. You can choose any color for this assignment except not red and not black. Not red because of the leaf and not black because it might blend in with the hair. So I'm going to choose a nice bold blue and say OK. And then you have to make sure that the tippy tip point of the arrow is inside the letters. OK, not any other part, not the bucket like you might be used to, but the tippy tip point of the arrow must be inside the letters. And now I can select all the letters. By the way, should you choose to go back and try and change this, what you'll discover, very strange behavior, is that it now selects only that one letter. And so if you want to come and do this for only that one letter and do an um, oscillating pattern. I don't know why you would want to do this. If you don't like the blue that you've selected, just control Z or edit undo back until you get back to the white. And then again, you could choose a different shade of blue and hit OK. And as long as you've edit undone, edit undo back, I'm just going to randomly choose a different letter this time and click inside it. And you can see they all highlight. Yay. Who that was a lot of work. So I'm done with all my paths now. Thank you very much, paths, for coming out. You can, see I st you can see that I still have the jiggly line selection here. So I'm all done with you. Thank you. Let's select none. And now I can go back to my layers and see that I have three layers. I'm done with the vote for amber layer here that's straight across. Thank you very much. You've served your purpose. And now I just have this text top layer that very clearly I click it off. I click it on, I click it off, I click it on, has vote for amber. That was a lot of work.
There's one last step to go, and that's the easiest one. We want to rotate this into place. So here's our rotate tool, and here's our text. If I click one time on the text, don't bother to drag it. I know you want to drag it, but just don't bother. Click on it one time, you'll get the rotate pop-up window that comes up, and you'll notice a slider. So just move the slider a little bit, see what happens. It should move something like this. Because we worked really hard to create our curve that went around the curve of the circle, therefore this rotate tool is way easier to use. It's almost like it's lined up for us. And I'm going to put vote for amber there. And again, here's my rotate button. So it sets it. And now I've got a vote for amber. Don't mind, I don't mind right now if there's overlap here. We'll fix that later.